Thank you, David. Before I start Dr. Jean DeFolier's presentation, I am the co-author in his uh, presentation, and as David said that uh, he could not be here uh, physically, but uh, he's actually giving the talk. I'm not giving a talk. He is. I'll play a video. Uh, but before I do that, I must say that uh, David Gracer, Dr. Gracer, and uh, Dr. Florence Dunkel, they uh, they really did a magnificent job of pulling together all the personalities, all the expertise in this area of uh, science. Uh, and uh, Jean Defolia started this uh, business uh, of uh, food insect uh, uh, research or entomophagy back in 1974. He is uh, trained as a medical entomologist had entire his career in medical entomology, produced lots of great people and personalities who are serving this country and around the world. Uh, but then toward the, toward the end of his career, he said, well, I might want to do something else. And a uh, lot of you in the audience do not know that uh, I was the very last student of Jean de Follier, uh, before he retired, worked in food insect research. And we also have in audience the very first student of Jean de Foliat in the food insect research. So, Mark Fink, Dr. Fink, rise please. So, <clears throat> and after the presentation, I would ask uh, ESA President David Hogg to come forward and receive the plaque on behalf of the program symposium and the entire program committee, ESA program 2010 to honor Jean de Foliard. So with that, uh, let's uh, play the video. Greetings. First thing I want to say is, although you can see that I am draped with oxygen equipment hanging all over me, this is in no way connected to any possibility that I might have at any time ever eaten too many insects. Quite a few people have asked over the years how I became interested in insects as food. The phone rang one afternoon in the fall of 1974 while I was chairman of the Department of Entomology, University of Wisconsin in Madison. On the other end of the line was Robert P. Hansen, the professor of biology in the Department of Veterinary Science. We knew each other well, having collaborated for several years in research on mosquito-borne viruses. These include, among others, the mosquito-borne viruses that can result in encephalitis. Bob told me that there was an effort underway by several faculty members to organize what they were calling a symposium on unconventional sources of protein. It would be held on the Madison campus and would involve professors who had conducted research appropriate to the subject. In addition, however, the organizers thought, uh, thought that edible insects should be included in the symposium. Bob asked if there was anyone in our department, entomology, who might like to take on the assignment. I suggested the names of a couple of people who might be willing, and I agreed to contact them. In each case, however, when I broached the subject, the professor suddenly remembered that he had to be in Europe or somewhere. Uh, on the date of the symposium. So I called Hanson and told him I couldn't find anyone in entomology with the time and inclination to accept the assignment. Then I left the office and went home to have the flu for the rest of the week. For the next several years, Prince not infrequently suggested that I must have become delirious after I got home. The more I thought about the possible implications of insects as a food resource, the more fascinated I became with the subject. On Friday, a little before 5 p.m., I got out of bed, pushed my fevered body to the phone, dialed Professor Hansen's number, and told him that if the insect slot on the symposium program was still open, I would like to do it myself. That's how. Not long afterward, I found myself listed on a pretty impressive looking program, scheduled to speak on a subject I knew nothing about. The workshop was scheduled to be held April 22, 1975 on the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences campus. 
except for an <coughs> no, <coughs> excuse me, except for an opening speaker invited over from Michigan State, the participants were all from UW departments and UW affiliated labs. The lineup of 11 subject speakers and speaker affiliations was listed and included insects as a source of protein, GR defiler, Department of Entomology. <clears throat> Luckily, the Ag Department, the Ag Library rather, was right next door to my building. I started going over there a lot, trying to find out relevant information, especially research results of any kind. In the end, I wound up with a presentation based on 25 references cited. I thought I had a nice dramatic opening paragraph. Quote, C.F. Hodge, 1911, calculated that a pair of house flies beginning operations in April to produce enough flies if all survived to cover the earth 47 feet deep by August. This, of course, is an ecological absurdity, but it does convey some idea of the tremendous reproductive potential of some insects. If one can reverse uh, for a moment the usual focus on insects as enemies of man, Hodge's layer of flies represents an impressive pile of animal protein. My closing paragraph was as follows. Insect protein literally abounds all around us. It's been established that it is of high quality. The need now is for those who are familiar with the biology of specific insect species to become acquainted with kinds and quantities of waste available and to do some exploratory research to determine the true economic feasibility of harvesting this protein and of utilizing insects and recycling waste for the production of protein. Before submitting the manuscript for publication, I thought I would give it the acid test by asking Professor Stanley Beck and Professor Fumio Matsumura, two of the brightest lights in our department in that era, or in the other era, to take a look at it. Both recommended that it be submitted to the Journal of Science where readership would not be so heavily dominated by entomologists. <clears throat> uh, the uh, editor of uh, Science agreed with, with the idea of publishing it there, but uh, we, uh, he, he decided that uh, they were behind, too far behind on publishing. And uh, so it would probably be better not to do it. We did a considerable amount of research in those years, publishing 22 technical papers, all of which are listed on my website which is www.foodinsects.com or Google Insects as Food or Gene Defiler. And my website will be the first one that shows up. The publications are available in PDF format via email request. My email address is on my website. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce each of my graduate students who worked on food insects. Of those in attendance, I ask them to please I ask them to please stand up when your name is called. Mark Fink first. Mark is currently the director of technical services for PetSmart. He oversees all aspects of product development, quality assurance, and health of pets for PetSmart stores. He's still active in the area of nutrient content of insects and vertebrates with a focus on feeding captive bred insectivores. Mostly, <coughs> excuse me, 
mostly reptiles. Next, Stephen Landry. Steve is currently the deputy director in the area of vaccine delivery with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a name you will most, most of you will be familiar with. He's responsible for coordinating the foundation investments that support the poorest countries of the world to expand their immunization programs to include newly available vaccines. Next, Barbara Nakagaki, and I'm sorry I have no further information about Barbara at this time. Next, Mega Parodioli. Mega is currently a professor of faculty fellow and faculty fellow at Texas a and University, in addition to being, of course, the program chairman here today. He oversees the cotton entomology research for the largest contiguous, uh, contiguous uh, cotton patch in the world, consisting of 3.5 million acres of cotton in West Texas. He has a 25% teaching appointment that entails teaching of one course a year. He teaches insect ecology and IPM. Many others have contributed valuable research on this subject, but I'll mention only one because of time restrictions. In the spring of 1986, I had the unexpected and very great pleasure of receiving a letter dated by April 14th from Dr. Yulia Ramos Alorde, Deacon Coney of the National Autonomous University of Mexico, stating that she had been awarded an AID Agency for International Development Scholarship for a short time research visit to a research laboratory in the United States. And she would like to spend it, if possible, in our laboratory at the University of Wisconsin. Dr. Concone had been conducting extensive research since about 1974 on the insects used as food in Mexico and was a prolific producer of technical papers on their use and nutritional value. About a decade later, I was to have the honor of being asked by Yulieta uh, to write the foreword for her recipe book, published in English in the United States, titled Crispy, Creepy, Crawly Cuisine, Subtitled, The Gourmet Guide to Edible Insects, published in 1997. I started the foreword by saying, quote, Professor Yulia Ramos Alorde has probably contributed more to our knowledge of edible insects than has any other person, past or present. For more than 20 years, she and able colleagues at the National Autonomous University in Mexico have studied the use of insects as food in the Mexican countryside. Such use of insects dates to pre-Columbian times. And the Mexican researchers have documented use of more than 200 species. 200 species. Programs like the famous first uh, annual New York book banquet the 100th anniversary of the New York Amalasco Society, which was held at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel on May 19, 1992, have also brought the subject into greater visibility. My after-dinner talk, titled Insects Are Food, Where Has the Western World Been? And was the title of that? Uh, and elsewhere, and boasted by some excellent slides from Mexico and elsewhere, seemed to go over really well. I don't remember any other public event in my experience when the entire mood seemed so jovial and warm. 
And I'll never forget the young woman who came up afterward in the long line of will which was long, uh, took both of my hands in hers, both of hers, and said, it, it, and said, thank you, thank you. Now I know why we were here. The most recent and exciting news pertaining to edible insects is the recent mailing titled World Inventory of Activities on Edible Insects by FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. FAO believes that the specific role of edible insects and their potential in food security, dietary quality, and poverty alleviation is severely underrated. For that reason, FAO has given an assignment to the external experts, Arnold Van Hoos and Joost Van Eiderbach, to make a global inventory of current activities dealing with insects as food. This will be the start to formulate a strategy to promote human entomophagy in both developed and developing countries. Professor Van Hughes' email is on the slide. Thank you very much. With this, with this presentation, I hope you all agree with me that for 86 years old individual with oxygen on him, he gave a pretty dang good talk. Let's give him one more round of applause.